That's good, bro. Okay, we're live, bro. So here we live are, Toby. On with uh, we're on, we're on YouTube, live with Colby Beautiful. Fitness from Freestyle MMA in Windang, New South Wales. Teammate of Alexander Volkanovsky. So it's quite good that we're going to be chatting about USC 284. Eh? Um, Volk's obviously the biggest I'll fight, just give bro. Give away the game plan, eh? Just give it away completely, bro. You know. Because for sure, Islam is watching my channel just in case, you know, that something will happen. I'm pretty sure, um, what's his name? Um, what's the AKA coach? Hafray Mendes or whatever? He's yeah, going to be watching sure. this video trying to give you inside a scoop. For sure. I guarantee for it. Sure. And I must say, being he's down gonna, there... He's going to jump in. I must say, being down there the other week, it was kind of cool to see uh, Volk training with Craig Jones and that. Um, nice to see a few of the, these training a few techniques that may be employed. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, you got you got a bit of a, um, what would you say, inside scoop with that, so, yeah, it was quite cool, good. Bro. I was pumped just to watch Volk on the pads live and that, bro, that sort of stuff, I really like it. I like seeing people working pads, like the, the trainers, and I like seeing fighters do it too, because yep. you get more insight live watching people, you know? Yeah, exactly and, right, yeah, especially how um, Joe, Joe hold pads, because it's sort of pretty different how he does it sort of thing. True, so it's good. That's, oh yeah, it's, it's a different way compared to like your more traditional style of pad work sort of thing. That's it, bro. That hey, bro, we're going to kick straight into having a chat about a few of these fights. Heaps of Aussies on the card, a few Kiwis. Uh, it's going to be massive, massive for Australian MMA. All the car, all the, the tickets sold out almost immediately, so it leaves people like me with no chance of ever getting there. <laughs> so I, I don't know. It's, it's good and bad at the same time. Yeah, it is. It's definitely a... Um, a stacked, obviously a stacked card. It was better when you had Rob and Costa on it, but what can you say, like, locally for us, there's so many guys in that we know who are fighting, so it's pretty much like the best fight card ever, realistically, because they're, like, attached to, like, everybody who's on the card sort of thing, so it's good. Bro, it's amazing. I, I kind of forgot about Rob because I'm so pumped just looking at these fights. First one I wanted to chat about was Jimmy Crute versus Alonso uh, Minifield. I think... um. Jimmy, bro, he was such a prospect, man. You see him come up, he was looking so good, man. And then he just ran into a couple of barriers, a couple of hurdles. Uh, he's been working on himself lately, uh, hoping he can pull off the win. But he's got a, it's, there's trial by fire every fight in the UFC, man. This Alonzo Menafield, if you watched him, he's a beast, man. Like, he's a full beast. And, and Jimmy's coming up against a power puncher, good wrestler. It's going to be a tough fight for him. Yeah, man, it's hard, like, like he said. He obviously had that tough loss against Hill, who's now fighting for the belt, so there's no shame in that. Showed his heart against Anthony Smith, where he had his um, that perennial nerve sort of in his leg buckled, and he still tried to fight on. So, yeah, it's been rough for him these last couple, but, yeah, it's, like, it's hard because he's definitely talented and very good, but this isn't like a sort of easy fight they're giving him they're not like oh hey you've lost a few we'll give you sort of more of an upper come like this guy is a legitimate killer so yeah he's got a he's got a tough fight ahead of him jimmy does and as as i might have mentioned before that he had mullet power but he's lost that now bro so is that going to affect him is the lack of mullet going to affect him in his fight i'm not sure you know in australia you'd think having I think a mullet to be honest man like because mullet, mullet power is a real thing i think he just kept it even he even he shaved it off <laughs> i don't know Anyway. I think he should have just, just go bold head and full mullet. I feel like that would have been the best combination for it. That's a scallop, bro. That's called a scallop. You didn't know that? Oh, no, I didn't. It's always called so, a scallop. That's so guys like me with not much hair can actually grow one. We just call it a scallop. It's just a skull with a mullet. Just out the out back. back there. Just let oh, it throw. That's it. Yeah. So, <laughs> I like so man, it. When, when I look at these fights, obviously most of these podcasts, we're probably going to be rooting for the Aussies and Kiwis and, and kind of looking at ways they're going to win. I would say in this one, a big test, like I said, massive power puncher he's fighting. In a way, fighting someone with a massive right hand like Hill had, you know. So it's a tough one for him. But when you look at uh, his kicking ability and with Sam Greco in his corner, the Kyokushin uh, XK1 fighter, I think that's going to be part of his tactics as it was in the last couple of fights as well. Didn't go his way, but he still was using it really well. And I think that would be the – I think that's what he needs to kind of start with is using the distance of, of kicks and starting to work his legs. He's got to take away Alonzo's base a little bit or his um, explosiveness, you know. And I think there's two ways of doing that. One is smashing the legs. The other one is getting a decent takedown in a good position. But Menefield is really strong in the wrestle from the look of it. I'm not so sure about his BJJ style, but as far as taking him down or clinching with him, it might be a, it might be a tough out. What do you think, man? That's what I was thinking because it's always easy to say if they're a power puncher, take him down, put him on their back. 
But Manifield does have good takedown defense. But with Jimmy having good kicks, there's a few ways he can use him. He can use him to, like, obviously hit the legs early, which will slow his movement down, makes it harder. But he can also use a combination of flicking the left high kick up to actually jam his right hand, his power hand. And then as he's using the kick to jam it on the feet, he can look to just initiate takedown and clinches and get it to the fence. He might not get him down, but at least make him carry some of that weight because big boys, it is hard to... If Jimmy's on him in the clinch against the fence, just grind him out, wake him work, building up this lactic power, they get back to the center, starts kicking that hand again. You can really sort of sap a guy and take the energy out of his arms that way, even if you can't actually get the takedown and hold him there on his back. So I think that's going to be sort of Jimmy's best bet. I'll be, I would, I think that's pretty much what his game plan is going to have to be. He's going to have to come out, nullify that right hand early. Once he feels like he might have got the time in and that, or the power's not as dangerous as it is at the first sort of couple of minutes, then he can start to open more, look to counter, look to work your strikes that way. But I think early on, he's really going to have to focus on um, shutting that right hand down. Yeah, man, and Jimmy's kind of an interesting story. I've seen a few things on his Insta and that. I think before he was kind of known as a guy who liked a bit of beer and that, and maybe maybe that's something that was mm-hmm. uh, contradicting his performances a little bit, you know. And now I believe, not 100% sure because I don't know him, but I believe that he's... Um, that he's off the beer and that, and he's you know he's going clean and he's trying to change himself around. So that could be that could show as well. It might show in his performance. Be interesting to see, you know. Yeah, definitely. I think well, it's crazy. You have even see like guys like Bam Bam and that. How much further they can actually go in the sport and grow and develop when they sort of let go of almost like that party lifestyle, where it's good to have like that sort of not even like a gimmick, but just they're being themselves, but like being themselves isn't congruent with the fighter's lifestyle sort of thing. Like, you, it's hard to be that full-time athlete as well as, like, that f- fun party animal as well. So I think a lot of them guys, they have to come to a crossroad and they sort of pick what's more important to them. And, yeah, I think Jimmy's picking the fighting stage at this point. It's awesome to see, man. Anyway, I'm picking Jimmy. I think it, there's, he's always got the chance of landing a decent shot, getting a KO, and he's also a very good submission artist. So I'm picking him for the win by, by KO or Subman. And, you know, obviously it's a tough fight. It's not a given. He has to really work to get that. Uh, but I'm going to be pretty much going for all the Aussies and Kiwis, you know. <laughs> That's just how it is. What about you? I'm, I, I don't think – well, I can say I don't have to think. There's not going to be a single Aussie or Kiwi I'm going to vote against or go against this whole podcast. But I think Jimmy's <laughs> going to get it done, and I think he's going to get the sub. I'm pretty, uh, I'm confident in that. I think he's going to nullify his right hand. Eventually, he's going to get him down. And I think constant like pressure and pace. I think he'll catch him on the ground. Yeah, man. In saying that, we'll look at a couple of their fights. And I think we'll probably look at it more of a, you know, what are the tactics that they need to use to beat their their opponents rather yeah. than just a straight out, you know, um, guess of what's going to happen. Trash them. So- and- Build up the Aussies. <laughs> That's it, man. So next one we got young Kiwi, Mr. Shane Young uh, versus Blake Builder. Now Shane Young's a top lad, you know. Done a done a couple of interviews with him. Real nice guy. Pushes uh, his New Zealand Maori heritage uh, out there as well, which is a good thing. Shows a good leadership for his, uh, you know, the young young Maoris in New Zealand to look up to. <laughs> really looking forward to him getting back out there, man. Uh, it's been a long time. He's been up and down, uh, but he's getting back in. And, and this is a decent opponent he's coming up against, man. What do you think about this fight? Yeah, um, it was only recently this fight got announced for Shane announced it. So I was stoked. I've actually um, spent a bit of time with Shane, like when he's came over to train and then we actually all like the whole COVID camp thing. So yeah, I got to know him pretty well. And he's honestly like, yeah, like you said, one of the sort of nicest dudes in the like sport of MMA sort of thing. Like he's, he's the type of guy like you met, you'd you meet him once and it was like you've been best mates for like your whole life sort of thing like he has that vibe so I'm all, it's good to see him back in action he has had um, a little bit of his, uh, a break honestly about his opponent I don't know too much um, I saw his contender series fight but besides that he's yeah I saw he's 7-0 and so decent guy but I think I think Shane's going to be too sort of um, well versed and too crafty like realistically I think Shane's faced um a lot better guys. I know him and Alex train together on that, but they have fought. So even just on that, Shane's already been in there with the best guys. So he's felt the sort of that level of experience where I just don't think this guy's on the same sort of level. And especially coming over to Perth in a sort of like um, a foreign crowd, I think a lot of that can get to a guy on his debut. And I think it's going to be a really good showing for Shane in this fight. 
Yeah, this Blake, his name's Blake Builder, says El Animal. <laughs> That's his nickname. But uh, for me, watching a couple of his fights, he looks like his uh, basics are like Muay Thai and wrestling. That's what his kind of go-to is. And he's got he's got very explosive, strong uh, low kicks and high kicks, man. Uh, great double, etc. He seems to get a lot of submissions from, from his last fights. And I think... Uh, it's kind of a little bit similar in a way to the last one we mentioned. I think Shane has to somehow take the edge off the guy. Like if he just goes head to head straight up, it might be dangerous for him. But Shane, when you watch both of them, he seems to have a superior kind of CKB style footwork where he can avoid, if he's smart enough, he can avoid these uh, yeah. big kicks and uh, avoid the takedown for a while. Let this guy, you know, just lose that edge in his power because he's an explosive, strong guy and then start to do his work as it gets into the second and third. So for me, I kind of say, the tactic for Shane will be use his CKB feints and movement to kind of baffle the guy, just take the edge off him before he does his work in the second and third, which is kind of common technique for the CKB guys I, I see from from what I watch anyway. So I hope to see that now. I like to see I like to see him get a win. Uh, I hope he's hope he's uh hope he's really ready to go well. And he looks away. You look at him in you look at him in social media again. He's training a lot. He kind of seems to have uh, worked on his strength over the years. He looks a bit more powerful than he did before. So I'm hoping that shows in the fight. Bro, I was just going to say on that, he looks like in unreal shape already, and it's like four weeks out sort of thing. He's looking real lean. Yeah, he's looking like the um, yeah, strongest I've seen him. And if, obviously, if you follow follow him on socials, you've seen him doing lots of like the... I think he's finally started working with a good S&C coach sort of thing. You can see it um, pay off in his physique. But as with a fight, I think it's like what you said. The only problem with that sort of footwork style and being evasive in the first round is you still need to do enough against these explosive guys to win. Because even though you can nullify their uh, explosive nerf by using your range, your distance and everything like that, you still can't take the risk of being too passive trying to nullify them and them getting up that first round. Because that first round is crucial, especially in a three round fight, because then it puts the pressure on you to win the next two. So I think Shane's gonna have to be like that calculated, um, counter pressure because this guy's probably going to come forward and put that pace i think shane has to not play on the outside but be smart and use his footwork but i think he also needs to go a little bit more because i think that's what we saw in his last couple of fights where he was almost he was almost waiting that second too long for that perfect shot and was missing opportunities whereas i think if he can just yeah like i said honestly just go that little bit more maybe force a few more shots stay in the exchanges a little bit longer and try and win the sort of exchanges and points that way and then secure the rounds and later on in the second and third once that explosive is down he can really start to unload and not have that same sort of um danger present as in the first round with as these explosive guys but yeah i'm, I'm very excited to see it's been i think the way shane's looking i think it's going to be sort of like a um standout performance for him yeah, cool, man. I'm hoping, in my mind, I'm kind of thinking a points win if it goes the way I kind of envisage. Uh, what about you, bro? What are you thinking? I, I'm thinking, I think a late finish, to be honest. I think, as we've seen, Shane's tough and he's in there for the whole fight. So I think I think the first round's going to be pretty competitive. Then I think Shane's going to um, come away with it in the last two. And I, But I think he's going to sort of really have that mongrel that I think he's going to put him away in the third with the hands. Cool. Man, uh, on to another, which I'm not actually familiar with, Shannon Ross, Shannon Ross, the Turkish delight from Australia, fighting Clayton Rodriguez from Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, do you know this guy at all? I know he fought on, on uh, what's it called, Shannon. Eternal in Australia. And uh, I've seen I've Yeah, seen yeah he's, he's actually come down and trained with us for a bit. Nice, nice. So you'd be able to talk yeah, about yeah, him and maybe the fight because, yeah, from my perspective, I've watched a couple of his fights, but it's not so clear. They were kind of older fights. Uh, the Clayton Rodriguez, his opponent, looks very good, man, like really nice stand-up. Uh, knows, I mean, he does takedowns, he likes on the ground, but he doesn't look as, as comfortable there. He looks really comfortable in, in the Muay Thai kickboxing range, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's a dangerous opponent for him, man. Tell us what you think Shannon should be doing. Yeah, I think Shannon's going to have to, he's going to have to fight fire with fire. I think he's going to have to get in his face early and just make it, it sounds as cliche, but make it that mixed martial arts fight. Whereas he's going to have to mix in the wrestling. Obviously, he's going to have to be cautious in the clinch. He's going to have to try and get it to the fence. And he's just going to constantly have to... He's either on the outside moving or he's in your face and he's going. He's not sitting at that Muay Thai... Not that Muay Thai range, but more that... You know that range, that playful range where it's like you go, I go, you go, I go, where they go hip for hip. He can't play that game with this guy. He either needs to be all the way in against him, like I said, put in that pressure... 
all he needs to be on the outside trying to draw him into shots. Whereas if he tries to go one for one with this guy, it's going to be hard. Because like you see, this guy is very explosive. He's got fast kicks. He finishes his punches with kicks well. He finishes his kicks with punches. This guy's pretty good on the feet, man. So I think he's going to, yeah, have to mix it up. Hey, I might be, I might be stupid. Hey? I was just thinking, he was training when I was there, right? He was doing rounds there, I'm thinking. Was he, he was. doing rounds? Yeah, he was. <laughs> How stupid am I? Was, I was pretty sure. I was like, I'm right? maybe saw this guy at a gym. <laughs> yeah, he was training rounds. He was in there doing kind of shark tank, right, with people smashing him. Yeah, he was, yeah. It would have been that Wednesday. Yeah, yeah he was, definitely. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I, now, I, now I know what he's like. That's funny because I've barely watched his fights, but I've seen him train him. So, yeah, it was good, good to watch. Yeah, cool. No yeah. worries, bro. So let's hope. I, I actually wrote down this to overcome Rodriguez with volume and take away his skills and power, you know, and I think that's kind of what you said, yeah. that he has to keep working. Like, so that was obviously what he's working yeah. towards. So let's see him get there, eh? Yeah, let's go, Shannon. Good bro, man. and then we've got uh, Mr. Farjack Jenkins from Bacchus Marsh, his first fight in the UFC. A uh, funny guy called Don Shanus, Shameless Shanus uh, from the States. Another, it's a big test for him. Like I say, every fight in the UFC is like, um, you know, it's a difficult one. He's a tough guy. He's fighting a guy that's got a good, good strong stand-up, seems to be have a very strong wrestling base. So it'll be a big challenge for, for Jack Jenkins to get in there and take him out. What do you think is going to happen in this one, bro? I think Jack's going to have a, like a, almost a show-out performance. I think in his contender fight, he relied a lot on his grappling which some people not many but like dana white said they wish he would have mixed it up but i don't see why like the grappling was working well he he ended up finishing the guy he was bashing him everywhere if that's the path of least resistance is to take the guy down and bash him on the feet i mean bash him on the ground then why wouldn't you sort of thing like it makes i don't understand why some people are like why would you make the fight harder for yourself especially when it's sort of this is, especially a contender series, you win that fight in a good way, you're pretty much guaranteed a contract sort of thing. With this guy, I think we're going to see more of a stand-up affair because old mate's going to look to wrestle. So I think Jack has very good counter-wrestling. He has good hips. He's good against the cage. So I think as long as Jack can sort of hold the center and dictate the range and pace on the fight, obviously he's known for his leg kick. So he's going to look to establish the kicks early and I think he's going to bust up the leg. Then once the leg's bust up, he's going to start to open it up with the hands. Yeah, man, I agree. And I, I think uh, I wrote down that I think he should be using like centerline attacks because this guy does real loopy punches and that. And I think the key is using those centerline punches, which Jack can use, you know, uh, straight punches, uppercuts down the center, uh, front kicks, knees. And he has to be real careful of that, of that single, you know, because this guy, this guy loves to take people down. He's good at ground and pound, you know, he, he has a good base on the ground. So, yeah, I think Jack needs to keep it standing, which he's done before, you know. Obviously, one of his key weapons is the calf kick. He breaks a lot of people's legs, but uh, Don Shanus also throws a calf kick, so it could be a battle of the calf kicks in the first round. Battle of the calf kicks. <laughs> Who's got the tougher calf? <laughs> see, how, we'll see how we go, but yeah. I'm hoping he lands a couple in the beginning because that'll slow this guy down and keep him away. If, uh, you know, it'd be hard for him to shoot if he busts his leg up. So, yeah, hoping Jack gets it. Again, he's a good guy, you know. It gives me a lot of time for interviews and that. I'd really like to see him be successful. He's been very successful in the last couple of years. I'd like to see that continue and see how far he can get in the UFC. Yeah, definitely. Same thing. What's your prediction? I think he's going to, um, I think second round TKO, I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, the, the guy seems pretty tough, man. He's pretty fit and, and strong. I, I'm I'm kind of leaning towards, uh, you know, a long drawn out fight, perhaps points, but mm -hmm. I hope Jack gets the KO. You know, he's got the ability to. And the power for sure. Okay, now we got a very interesting one, which I'm, I'm, I'm pumped to watch again, man. Josh Kulabau versus Melsik Bagdasarian. Yes. Melsik Bagdasarian, I heard him mentioning in one of his fights, he has hundred, had hundreds of, of stand-up fights. On his record, he doesn't have hundreds. He's got like uh, professional Muay Thai, uh, professional kickboxing, boxing, fought in glory. Also, he's got an MMA career. It was uh, eight fights, seven wins. He's, I think he probably has had a lot of fights in the amateurs. That's, that might be what they're referring to. And you can see it when he fights. His strength would be, his, you know, he's got a real strong stand-up base. His kicks are incredibly hard. This is his big thing. He has a big kick advantage, I would say, that probably anyone in the UFC almost because he's just a really, really strong kicker. I saw him as soon as he fought. I went, man, look at this guy's kicks. He could break people, you know. But he's coming up against someone who's got a bit of a wild card. I reckon Josh Kulabau, he's just, he's got, so, you've, you've trained with him, man. He gets weird angles and weird timing and that, that he could really throw off someone that's used to the typical timing 
of uh, kickboxing fight and kickboxing boxing training because he lands things like when he fought Choi, Choi, he smashed him. He lands things at weird angles and weird timing that throws people off. And I can see Josh potentially upsetting this guy uh, either one of two ways, what, either this strange uh, timing that he has or mixing it up, which the problem with Josh is I think he'll be drawn into a stand-up fight because that's what he kind of likes. And once he lands something, he's just going to go, fuck fuck using my extra skills to take this guy out. He's just going to bang with him. But he's going to bang with this dude. I hope he uses them May schools because that's where his advantage is, right? Bagdasarian is a kickboxing stand-up fighter. Josh is an MMA fighter. I'd like to see him utilize that because that's how that's the easy path. But I don't think Josh always takes the easy path. So let's see what happens. What are your thoughts, bro? I think you made a good point with just saying how, like, Josh's style is very unique. Like, he's very offbeat. He has a unusual rhythm to his striking sort of thing. Like, he's in, he's out, he's in, and then he's firing sort of thing. So perfect example is that Choi fight where he was landing clean one-twos, big hooks, like – Big one-off punches, which you won't necessarily say a textbook, but the way he sets them up works. And the good thing about that style against these more, what would you say, more fundamentalist strikers who are very sort of on beat, very technical, everything's to this, everything's really clean, the jabs are super straight, the closes, the hooks are thrown really tight. The unorthodox guys can normally give these guys a lot of trouble because they're so used to fighting against the other sort of, what you say, like, yeah, high-level fundamentalist, where it's that game of inches, whereas with this, it's a whole different movement. It's a whole different movement pattern. Like, best way I could explain it is, like, if you, obviously, with sparring and that, where you get new guys who come in and they've got no idea, really, of skill sets, but because their timing's awkward and they're just thrown weird, like, it's just things catch you off beat. And obviously, it's not saying anything like about Josh like level or anything like that. But his style is naturally just built that way, where he's very hard to get reads on. So guys who want to sort of play in front, it's like especially that K one style where it's you go, I go, you go, I go. If Josh tries to do that with him, it's not going to end well. But the thing with Josh is he's going like I go, I go, I go. Now I'm out of range. Now I'm shooting. Now I'm going again. So it's very hard to predict and sort of build because a lot of these guys they like to build off their they're like alright establish a jab establish a low kick follow up the kicks with punches now start adding more pop look to the body and they start to add things that way but if you can't get your first few attack offs because a guy's so hard with his movement and timing guys get frustrated so I wouldn't I honestly wouldn't be surprised if Josh puts this guy out I think especially as it gets later on if bat I don't know if you're going to try to I'm going to call him the gun if a gun tries to open up and get really try to catch Josh like that. I think that's when Josh is really going to sort of pick his mark and Josh has got lots of pop at obviously 66. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see Josh put this guy out. I reckon I feel like if I was a matchmaker from these guys, I think I'd be looking at Bagdasar and thinking it's a good a good guy to bring up and maybe maybe Josh is a good opponent for him. But I think he's... I think that he's a bit of a wild card, Josh. I think he's gonna he's gonna take him out too. I reckon he's got those he's got the punches to take him out, even though he's a stand up fighter. But I really hope he mixes it up because that's gonna give him an easier path. And I think it's a you know, I think it's a stoppage of some form or other too. I'm pumped for that fight. Yeah, bro. Kuya, Kuya always brings a fight. I'm so pumped for it. I can't wait. Him and Hooligan on the same card. The boys are fucking yeah. <laughs> How cool is I'm that? Sure James How good is that? Actually. So these guys have been wanting, from the beginning, they wanted to have a fight together in the UFC, and now it's come to fruition, uh, barring any shitty things to happen. So I'm pumped for that. I'm going to get them both on and have a chat on uh, Tuesday, actually. So that'll be fun. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll um, photobomb the back of it. <laughs> You're going to be around. sick, sick. Yeah. Right, he's, he's like two rooms down from me, Jamie, the dog. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. All right, bro. So next one we got is uh, Justin Tuffer versus Parker Porter. Um, Justin Tuff is your no, kind of your Parker typical Porter fight live. What's that? You go. I said I'm pretty yeah. sure I've seen Parker Porter fight at the Apex. Yeah, sounds like a sounds like a tongue twister that name. Hey, um, so obviously Tuff is a beast of a, a New Zealand-born Samoan uh, in Australia, man. Mad hands, very strong hands. Trains uh, some Thai boxing at NTG up on the Gold Coast, so he's got to have that strong Thai base. Uh, he's obviously working his wrestling in BJJ. You see him in his fights, uh, chasing subs and stuff like that as well. So um, he's, he's working to get better and better. He could bang anyone out in the whole division. You see the size of his legs, the size of his upper arms, bro. It's like, 
Like, they're bigger than, I reckon, bigger than my quads, bro, his upper arms, Justin Tuffer. He's a big boy. Mm -hmm. And he's coming up against a decent opponent. Parker Porto, first look, doesn't really look like a mad fighter, but he's good. And he's got a black belt in BJJ, which I'd say would potentially be what he'd be looking to go to. But first, he's got to get through the hands and kicks of Tuffer to get him to the ground. So, good luck with that, bro. I'm thinking Tuffer lands on the way in and takes Parker Porter out, bro. <laughs> what are your thoughts? I think Justin puts him to sleep inside one round, I think, to be honest. Like, yeah, like, they call him a bad man for a reason. And, like, yeah, like, he, just his um, physicality, like, what I forget which fight it was of Justin's, but there was a fight at the apex where he just stood, which uh, he stood in front of a dude for 15 minutes straight, and all they did was throw, um, it was, was it the Jared, yeah, Van... Bender up, or however you say it, but that fight, bro, and I'm telling you, these hits were echoing full of the apex on his head, and he's just like, and then just coming forward, so I think Justin's, Justin's just going to walk this guy down, and I think he's going to land a big one to on him, and I think he's going to put him to sleep, simple as that. <laughs> they're both kind of, when you watch both of them, they're both kind of boxing-based, uh, Parker's got the BJJ side as well, but their both approach is a boxing-based approach. And it's going to be interesting to see uh, these guys just going because they're going to crack each other for sure. It should be a banger, you know. I'm interested to watch it, man. Oh, bro, it's like there's a few guys in MMA as a whole where you just got to tune in, and just, Justin Tuff is one of them. Like if he's fighting, you're just guaranteed it's either going to be a firework knockout or it's just going to be 15 minutes of the boys just swinging and banging like it's always good entertainment to watch him fight yeah bro I'm thinking I'd love to see him because the other guy's boxing base I'd love to see him throw one of those monster legs into his leg a few times to begin with to slow him down because man those legs must hurt when you get kicked by him they're just too big bro <laughs> I don't know let's see oh, oh bro you could imagine like yeah like you said the size of his legs are just tree trunk so cop two of them and yeah you're gonna you're not gonna be walking for a week i think exactly all right bro next fight um giacomo della madalena otherwise known as jack della fighting randy brown uh jamaican american man um in the welterweight division it's a it's another big test for jack man like he's he's done so well with his fight so far um three finishes i think in the in the ufc so far or is it two finishes and one in the contender but he's killing it man his accuracy of punching uh, his pressure, you know, he's looking really, really good. Randy Brown is a is a next level fighter, I would say. He's fought some big mm -hmm. names: yeah. Vincente Luque, Trin Trinaldo, Barbarina, Nico Price, Mickey Gore, Bella Muhammad. So on the experience side, he's taken a step up. Although that uh, the Russian that the Delafort was was up there as well. So um, he was, yeah. Yeah, I think we're, I'm expecting big things out of Jack. You know, to keep coming. I think he's just he just really. He's just really doing it easy in the UFC at the moment, which is kind of unusual. Usually people come in and get tested, and he's just smashing everyone. And I'd like to see how someone's going to stop him. I really hope he lands some of those big punches. Um, I think the pressure, again, getting on the inside of this guy, because this guy's really tall and long. I don't know if you watched him. He's uh, have, real yeah. lanky, and the, 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 the key for Jack will be just getting past that range, which I think he can do. You look, you look at this, Randy, he just seems a little bit... You know, his base isn't so strong, the way he moves and everything. I think I think Jack will walk through his long range and start to work hard. Where he has to be careful is in the submissions because Randy Brown's got these long, gangly arms. He obviously likes locking up guillotines and uh, and potentially darses. So I think his danger will be in those submissions with the long arms. But I think if he can get in there, land his big left, um, he's going to take him out. Another KO for Jack, I reckon. You think? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, I think... Um Jack, yeah, this is definitely a um, it's a good step up too because obviously the, I can't pronounce a Russian guy, but he was no slouch, and Jack made pretty good work of him. Obviously, his first fight was obviously late notice opponent change. He ran through him, so I think this is a sort of next step up because, like you said, Jack was like a prospect of a year. He came through and just started running through guys, and this is a perfect sort of fight. Like I was hoping, like someone like Randy Brown, Belich or something, but this is good. Also, I think with the game plan wise, I think Jack is just gonna have to. Obviously, we know that boxing is his strength. And I think he's just gonna. I think his style plays really well to this fight. Basically, I think that against a taller guy, longer guys, is once you're inside, it's very hard to, especially with their frames, it's very hard to get clean on the head. But if you can start to work that body early, like Jack does with the rips, and opens him up that way, I think I. I I'm just picturing Jack slowly pressure him towards the fence, 
slipping inside, ripping the body a couple of times, then as soon as Randy Brown starts to drop his hands, I think he's going to hit the body, come over the top, and that's going to be lights out. Like, I think... I think even though this is a step up in competition, I still think stylistically this is a very favourable fight to Jack, just purely of how Randy likes to fight and Jack's style of how he wants to be in that pocket. He wants to be in that close range. He wants to rip that body, really sort of keep that forward pressure on guys. And I think, as we saw, he got caught in a dust in like the first minute, completely dry against a, that Russian guy who had heaps of submission wins. So I don't think that uh, getting caught in a choke or anything even though he may, I don't think he's going to lead to the finish. Though. I think he's very defensively sounding in all his submissions. And even when he's offensively coming forward, he's very rarely you see him in a vulnerable position. Like, everything's very calculated when he attacks. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see Jack, maybe not a first-round submission, but I think once we see real, Randy really start to slow down and his hands start to drop from that body work, I think then we're going to see Jack put him away. Yeah, man. I, like you said, I think the body is a key as well. Obviously, with the tall fighters, it's normal, a normal sort of tactic, right, to work the body. And Jack always works the body so strong. He hurts people a lot with the body shots before he takes them out. So, yeah, let's hope he lands it. Man, the, the reach is massively different, man. He's, the other guy's got 11 centimetres height on him and 13 centimetres reach, according to the stats. Oh, true. That's huge, man. 20-something centimetres if you add them together. That's massive. But, yeah, in, in doing yeah, saying yeah. that, you lose something being so tall. He looks the way he stands. Looks, looks sort of loose and not, not real balanced in that too. So let's see Jack get in there. And he's kind of the opposite. He's real staunch the way he stands and everything. Let's see him get in there and smash him. I'm up for Jack Della KO. Yeah. yeah. Mate, another, another great... Thinking, I think it's second or third round. Yeah. Put your house on that yeah. one, I reckon. Um, yeah, Tyson I reckon. Pedro, bro. Tyson Pedro versus Zhang Ming Yang. Uh, Chinese mountain tiger, I heard someone say. I don't know if that's his nickname, but I heard someone say it. Um, Obviously, they're trying to get the Chinese market in there. Um, I think Tyson's at another level, you know, from the experience base, the international people he's fought, and from a skill set. He, like he looks like a much more rounded and higher skilled fighter when I watch these two. I think he's more athletic. Um, he's got amazing reflexes. He's looking great so far. Massive power, uh, hurting people a lot with a front kick, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm thinking this is an easier one out of the ones we've talked to so far. I think Tyson's going to take this guy out. Um, Although this guy may be a little bit better than some of his opponents he had, a bit more of an up-and-comer, young guy, um, I still think he's going to take him out. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm just actually looking at his topology now because I saw he had a bunch of, like he had a couple of losses and he had a bunch of first-round KOs. But, yeah, so he beat 4-0, and 0-2, 1-2, 8-4, 5-0, 5-6, and 9-1-3. And 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 yeah, I don't Yeah, I don't think this is a hard... Yeah, I think Tyson's going to... Yeah, this guy's... He's not... Like, he's 26. Is he? 24. 24. Yeah. 24. So, yeah, I, th I think yeah, I, I think Tyson gets it done in one. Like, let's be real. How Tyson's looked in his last couple of fights, like, he's been extremely calculated, but he's also been aggressive with it too. And like I think you said, like, there's just levels to this. If you look at the guys who's Tyson fought versus the guy who – the mountain tigers fought. I think it's two different realms. I think Tyson, yeah, like you said, I think it's going to be a pretty easy fight to call. I think Tyson's going to get it done in one round. I think he's probably going to, yeah, I think it's a TKO and coming for Tyson. No disrespect to the guy. He looks all right. He's pretty young, but I just think purely off the level of opposition, it's a massive step up coming into fight. Yeah, uh, sort of rejuvenated and like career resurgent Tyson Pedro sort of thing. It's kind of cool, like the Tyson's got the real CKB movement starting to happen. Like you see from the last two fights, mm -hmm. the progression, the more the way he moves, he's, he's sort of looking more comfortable with that movement, you know? Like you see it, he definitely looked more into that movement. And I think we're going to see another progression again into this fight. I think he's going to become more and more comfortable with that sort of movement, lots of feints and moving around and, you know, trusting in his power as well, you know, to throw when he needs to throw. So looking forward to seeing him uh, again. I don't, the only thing concerns me a little bit, he's got a real, a chin, his chin's really high just from his style. Ah, oh, yes. I'd like to see it tuck a little bit. That's anything that just worries me a little bit. Yes, that's a, yeah, a few of the um, CKB boys with their style where they play that sort of lead hand game, they do tend to keep their chin. But I guess with that range and distance management, that sort of, nullifies it in the style as well sort of thing right now that that brings us to the main event a guy called alex volkanovsky versus islam makachev um i wonder who you think will win this fight bro what do you think 
Um, Josh Emmett, he's going to cash in money in the bank and then he's going to become the double champ is what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, yeah, obviously I can't, I can't, I can go into a bit of obviously not too much like because training and that, but yeah, I think, well, I think everyone just knows that, knows it's, it's just going to end up coming down to can Islam hold Volko down? And obviously, I don't, this is just not going to happen. Like the way um, Volko's preparation, naturally his style has been able to cover so many fights. Like pretty much his whole UFC career, besides Ortega, everything was just adapting a few tactics to win fights. Like there wasn't a lot of, okay, we have to fully immerse ourselves in this aspect of MMA to adapt to this opponent. Obviously, Ortega, you have to a bit reverse submission threats, but still then, it wasn't too much dedicated, whereas this has been a purely Alex for like the last, probably like eight weeks he's already been in camp and he's still got like another four to go, whereas it's been purely dedicated to just this, not purely, but heavily emphasised on the grappling sense of things. And he's got guys like Frank Hickman, Craig Jones, like there's a lot of good guys. He's gone over to Thailand training with the Merbex and the Chechens and everything like that. So he's he's getting quality rounds in with these good guys. And I think, yeah, like everybody already knows the level Volko's on. And I think people, don't be wrong, Islam's extremely good and everything, but I think it's almost a thing where people believe too much into the hype and like the Khabib 2.0, whereas like, oh, everybody thinks that if Islam gets one takedown, it's over sort of thing. Whereas Islam's, he's been knocked out before. He's had close grappling, like Armin Tarikian almost beat him sort of thing in the debut. There's been lots of close fights where he's had where he's been sort of taken down his boot and put on the back foot and grappling. And yeah, so obviously it's hard to like, I can't get into too much game plan on that. But I think people are going to be very surprised about how the actual fight plays out sort of thing. Yeah, man, I, I, I listen to a lot of uh, pros making predictions on it. And uh, there's people on both sides of the fence, you know, people saying Makachev is too big. That was a common theme coming up. Uh, some people saying Volk is too slick as well. Uh, Makachev's ground mm-hmm. game. So these are the common sort of themes coming up. But I think uh, obviously, like you said, the key that we're looking at is kind of standing versus ground. And I think some people say Islam Makachev's stand up is great. I think. I know when I sit back and I watch Makachev's striking, it's not great. It's good. Um, I think Volk's stand up is great, I would say. And I think that's where the diff- difference is. And I think uh, if you look at the stand up side, Vol- Volk's movement, his craftiness, his head movement, volume, his cardio, and in particular, his speed are the things that can beat Islam uh, in the stand up. He could make him look really bad in the stand up, potentially, you know? And at the same time, Islam could potentially make Volk look really bad on the ground. Who knows? You know, they're both MMA fighters. They both have skills in both those areas. They both probably have the potential to win in both those areas. There's, there's situations where Volk could potentially submit Islam if it gets in the right frame in a sub that he likes. There's a chance that Islam can land a powerful punch. You know, they both have a chance. But I would say when you look at the two skill sets, Volk has a real potential to upset things in a stand-up area, you know. Look at how he's been evolving, you know, smashing um, mm-hmm. smashing a few people, bro. Like he did did so well against Chan Sun Jung. He really stepped up his game. And then you look at him last time with Holloway. He's doing it easy. He was playing in there and making one of the best yeah. ever look like shit, you know. So Islam can't match his speed for sure. I think he's going to have trouble hitting him. What he has to rely on is getting him to the ground or in the clinch. And uh, let's see how he goes with that. Thoughts? Yeah, I think that it's, it's like we said, like everyone knows Islam's going to want to get down. I think the biggest thing is that even if or when Islam gets Alex down, just because you got him down, he's very, very hard to hold down sort of thing. Like, And even to actually get caught out of position and that. Like look at Chad Mendes, who's a fantastic grappler. Volko, at one point against the cage, just stood up and turned over and, like, mounted it with his hips. And the next part, Mendes was on his back for about two seconds. And before Dominic Cruz could even say how good Mendes was at finishing it, Volko turned in and stood back up sort of thing. So uh, I think people... And then we can look at the Ortega submissions and that sort of thing. Like, I think 
Yeah, it's just be, I think obviously Max is probably going to get takedowns, but I think the biggest thing is is when Alex keeps getting up and he gets up and the strike is not changing because you see a lot of guys that are grapplers, whereas the strikers are very comfortable on their feet. They get taken down once and they, they don't shit the bed, but their style starts to, they're a lot more hesitant, they're a lot more worried about the takedown because like, oh, I, I can't be taken down again. Then it limits their striking, whereas I think if when Alex gets taken down, He's going to get straight back up and he's going to be straight back on Islam and Islam's not used to that. He's used to guys wilting. He's used to getting one or two takedowns and the stand-up stuff. That's why his stand-up looks great to some people because the grappling defense, I mean grappling offense, uh, really pulls from their opponent's striking defense, if that makes sense, because it creates more openings because they're more hesitant. So then it makes his striking looks a lot better. Whereas if guys... No, don't, they're not. It's not that they're not respecting the takedowns, but they're confident and they're comfortable in their own ability to get up. And if it goes there to actually defend the takedown, if then they're back to get back up, I think that's really what's going to make a big difference. I think really later on in the rounds we're going to see that, and I think that's really when we're going to see, like you said, I think Volko is going to really sort of expose a lot of holes in Islam's game um, throughout. I think like cardio later on. I think even just the will and determination, because it's going to be a tough fight. But, and just that you're going to see Volko's in there for the whole 25 minutes, getting back up to the feet, putting damage on Islam on the feet, looking for his own takedown threats and really sort of putting it all together like that. I think we're really going to see sort of Islam crumble towards the end of the fight. And I wouldn't be surprised if Volko puts him away in around like the fourth or fifth round here. Man, with the way I watch Makachev fighting Charlie Olives, the speed of his punches, he landed punches, but from the speed of the punches you were throwing, I feel like Volk's going to see them a fucking mile off, bro. Like, he's not going to be there. The guy's going to throw a looping slow hook. Volk's not going to be there anymore. Volk's going to be off to the side, chopping his leg, volume punching. It's going to be difficult for him, man. It's going to be very cool to see. Yeah, I think also what this is, is just in general, it was like we're so lucky to have this event because it's a... Uh, number one versus number two pound for pound with like the Australian champ going for the elusive double chance study. Like it's it's one of the like um, most historic, yeah, we say like historic events in UFC history, especially when Volko gets this done. Like this instantly puts him to like top three of all time conversations when he beats Islam sort of thing. So I think I just can't wait for it. So, yeah, February 12th, Australia time, cannot come soon enough. Like, I'm lucky enough I get to be there in the crowd watching it in good seats. So I'm cheering. We're going to try and find you a ticket, Toby. We're going to find some scalpers and we'll get you over <laughs> you know, there, mate. You know, you get a ticket, I might fly over. We'll see. We'll see. Hey, um, on that note, I, I was in Oz. I went past the TAB. I couldn't help but throw a bet on Volk because it was on the on the machine. So money where my mouth is, I got Volk. Uh, big odds, anyone that wants to cash in. <laughs> I wouldn't say bet the house on was it. Was like $3 or something at the moment? Yeah, it was 3 something. I can't remember. Yeah, 3 something. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, no doubt. Yeah, that's, that's expected. A lot. Hopefully it goes to $7 and I can just bet my house on him and then I'll be set. I won't have to work ever again. True. No need to fight anymore, bro. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, bro. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna end the broadcast. And uh, thanks anyone that came on. We had a couple of viewers at one point. And um, yeah, we'll talk Legends. soon, bro. Yeah, I'll send this. Sounds good, brother. Uh,